the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen, amen. oh my god i am heartily sorry for having offended you and i detest all my sins because i dread the loss of heaven and the pains of hell but most of all because they offend you my lord you who are all good and deserving of all my love and i firmly resolve with the help of your grace to confess my sins to do penance and to amend my life amen dear friends as jesus is in the tomb as mary is filled with sorrow and grief for a son we now contemplate on the seven sorrows of mary throughout her life after especially after the prophecy of simeon who said a sword will pierce your heart we now contemplate on the seven sorrows in the life of mary the first sword of sorrow the prophecy of simeon luke 22:22 to 35 and when the time came for their purification according to the law of moses they brought him up to jerusalem to present him to the lord as it was written in the law of the lord that every male that opens a womb shall be called holy to the lord there the old priest simeon held the baby jesus in his hands and the holy spirit filled his heart simeon recognized jesus as the promised savior and held the child high towards heaven thanking god for granting his wish that he would live long enough to behold the messiah now your servant may depart this life in peace my lord he said simeon blessed them and said to mary his mother behold this child is set for the fall and rising of many in israel and for a sign that is spoken against and a sword will pierce through your soul also that the thoughts out of many hearts may be revealed the blessed virgin knew that she had given birth to the savior of human kind so she immediately understood and accepted simeon's prophecy although her heart was deeply touched by this favor of bearing the baby jesus her heart remained heavy and troubled for she knew what had been written about the ordeals and subsequent death of the savior whenever she saw her son she was constantly reminded of the suffering he would be subject to and his suffering became her own beloved mother mary whose heart suffered beyond bearing because of us teach us to suffer with you and with love and to accept all the suffering god deems it necessary to send our way let us suffer and may our suffering be known to god only like yours and that of jesus do not let us show our suffering to the world so it will matter more and be used to atone for the sins of the world you mother who suffered with the savior of the world we offer you our suffering and the suffering of the world because we are your children join those sorrows of your own and those of the lord jesus christ then offer them to god the father you are a mother greater than all our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day, day our daily, daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil hail mary full of grace the lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus holy, holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen most merciful mother remind us always about the sorrows of your son jesus
the second sword of sorrow the flight into egypt matthew 2:13 to 15 mary's heart broke and her mind was greatly troubled when joseph revealed to her the words of the angel they were to wake up quickly and flee to egypt because herod wanted to kill jesus the blessed virgin hardly had time to decide what to take or what to leave behind She took a child and left everything else rushing outside before Joseph so that they could hurry as God wished. Then she said, even though God has power over everything, he wants us to flee with Jesus, his son. God will show us the way and we shall arrive without being caught by the enemy. Because the blessed virgin was the mother of Jesus, She loved him more than anyone else. Her heart was deeply troubled at the sight of her infant son's discomfort, and she suffered greatly because she was cold and shivering. While she and her husband were tired, sleepy, and hungry during this long travel, Mary's only thought was the safety and comfort of her child. She feared coming face to face with the soldiers. who had been ordered to kill Jesus because she was aware that the enemy was still in Bethlehem her heart remained constantly anguished during this flight she also knew that where they were going where they, wherever they were going there would be no friendly faces to greet them beloved mother who has suffered so much give to us your comfort courageous heart Please pray for us to have strength so that we can be brave like you and accept with love the suffering God sends our way. Help us also accept all the suffering we inflict upon ourselves and the suffering inflicted upon us by others. Heavenly Mother, you in union with Jesus purify our suffering so that we may give glory to God. and save souls our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our, our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil hail mary full of grace the lord is with you Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb Jesus Holy Mary mother of God pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen Most merciful mother remind us always about the sorrows of your son Jesus the third sword of sorrow the loss of jesus in the temple luke 2:41 to 52 jesus was the only begotten son of god but he was also mary's child the blessed virgin loved jesus more than herself because he was her god compared to other children he was most unique because he was already living as god When Mary lost Jesus on their way back from Jerusalem the world became so big and lonely that she believed she couldn't go on living without him so great was her sorrow she felt the same pain her son felt when he was later abandoned by his disciples during the passion as the holy mother looked anxiously for a beloved boy deep pain welled in her heart She blamed herself asking why she didn't take great care of him but it was not her fault Jesus no longer needed her protection as before What really hurt Mary was that her son had decided to stay behind without her consent Jesus had pleased her in everything so far He never annoyed her in any way no 
would he ever displease his parents. She knew that he always did what was necessary. However, so she never suspected him of being disobedient. Beloved Mother, teach us to accept all our sufferings because of our sins and to atone for the sins of the whole world. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us and, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother, Mother of God, pray for us now, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Most merciful Mother, remind us always about the sorrows of your Son, Jesus. The Fourth Sword of Sorrow Mary meets Jesus on the way to Calvary Luke 23, 27-31 Mary witnessed Jesus carrying the heavy cross alone, the cross on which he was to be crucified. This didn't surprise the Blessed Virgin because she already knew about the approaching death of our Lord. Nothing how her son was already weakened by the numerous hard blows given by the soldiers' clubs. She was filled with anguish at his pain. The soldiers kept hurrying and pushing him, though he had no strength left. He fell exhausted, unable to raise himself. At that moment, Mary's eyes, so full of tender love and compassion, met her son's eyes which were pained and covered in blood. Their hearts seemed to be sharing the Lord, ever felt pain that he felt. Whatever suffering he went through, she went through as well. They knew that nothing could be done except to believe and trust in God and dedicate their suffering to Him. All they could do was put everything in God's hands. Beloved Mother, so stricken with grief, help us to bear our own suffering with courage and love so that we may relieve your sorrowful heart and that of Jesus. In doing so, may we give glory to God who gave you and Jesus to humanity. As you suffered, teach us to suffer silently and, to pa and patiently. Grant unto us the grace of loving God in everything. O Mother of Sorrows, most afflicted of all mothers, have mercy on the sinners of the whole world. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us in us now and the hour of our death. Amen. Most merciful Mother, remind us always about the sorrows of your Son, Jesus. The fifth sword of sorrow, Mary stands at the foot of the cross, John 19, 25-27. The Blessed Virgin Mary 
continued to climb the mount to Calvary, following behind Jesus painfully and sorrowfully, yet suffering silently. She could see him staggering and falling with the cross some more, and she witnessed her son being beaten by soldiers who pulled his hair to force him to stand up. Despite his innocence, when Jesus reached the top of Calvary, he was ordered to confess in front of the crowd so that they could laugh at him. Mary deeply felt her son's pain and humiliation, particularly when his tormentors forced him to strip off what was left of his clothing. The Blessed Virgin felt sick at heart seeing these tyrants crucifying her son naked, shaming him terribly merely to amuse the jeering crowd. The Blessed Virgin Mary felt pain beyond bearing when Jesus was stretched out on the cross. His murderers sang merrily as they approached him with hammers and nails. They sat on him heavily so that he could not move when they spiked him to the wood. As they hammered the nails through his hands and feet, Mary felt the blows in her heart. The nails pierced her flesh as they tore into her son's body. She felt her life fading away. As the soldiers lifted the cross to drop it into the hole that they had dug, they deliberately jerked it, causing the force of his body weight to tear through the flesh and expose his bone. The pain shot through his body like liquid fire. Jesus endured three excruciating hours skewered on the cross. Yet, the physical pain was nothing compared to the agonizing headache he was forced to bear seeing his mother suffering below him. Mercifully, he finally died. Beloved Mother, Queen of the Martyrs, give us the courage you had in all your sufferings so that we may unite our sufferings with yours and give glory to God. Help us follow all his commandments and those of the Church so that our Lord's sacrifice will not be in vain and all sinners in the world will be saved. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. death. Amen. Most merciful Mother, remind us always about the sorrows of your Son, Jesus. The Sixth Sword of Sorrow Mary receives the dead, dead body of Jesus in her arms. John 1938-40 The friends of Jesus, Joseph and Nicodemus, took down his body from the cross and placed it in the outstretched arms of the Blessed Virgin. Then Mary washed it and with deep respect and love because she was his mother. She knew better than anyone else that he was God incarnate who had taken a human body to become the saviour of all people. Mary could see the terrifying wounds from the flogging Jesus had received while at Pilate's place. His flesh had been shredded and large strips had been torn from his back. His entire body had been so lacerated that gaping boots crisscrossed him from head to toe. Mary found that the wounds from the nails were less severe than those caused by the flogging 
and the carrying of the cross. She was horrified at the thought that her son had managed to carry the heavy, splintered cross all the way to Calvary. She saw the circle of blood the crown of thorns had made on his forehead and to her horror realized that many of the barbed thorns had dug so deeply into his skull that they had penetrated his brain. Looking at a broken boy, the Holy Mother knew that his agonizing death was far worse than the torture reserved for the wickedest of criminals. As she cleaned his damaged body, she envisioned him during each stage of his short life, remembering her first look at his beautiful newborn face as they lay in the manger and every day in between until this heart-rendering moment as she gently bathed his lifeless body. Her anguish was relentless as she prepared her son and lord for burial, but she remained brave and strong, becoming the true queen of martyrs. As she washed her son, she prayed that everybody would know the riches of paradise and enter the gates of heaven. She prayed for every soul in the world to embrace God's love, so her son's torturous death would benefit all humankind and not have been in vain. Mary prayed for the world and she prayed for us all. We thank you, beloved mother, for your courage as you stood beneath the dying child to comfort him on the cross. As our Savior drew his last breath, you became a wonderful mother to all of us. You became the blessed mother of the world. We know that you love us more than our own earthly parents do. We implore you to be our advocate before the throne of mercy and grace so that we can truly become your children. We thank you for Jesus, our Savior and Redeemer, and we thank Jesus for giving you to us. Please pray for us, Mother. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Most merciful Mother, remind us always about the sorrows of your Son, Jesus. The seventh sword of sorrow, the body of Jesus is placed in the tomb, John 19, 41-42. The life of the Blessed Virgin Mary was so closely linked to that of Jesus, she thought there was no reason for her to go on living any longer. Her only comfort was that his death had ended his unspeakable suffering. Our sorrowful mother with the help of John and the holy women, devoutly placed the body in the sepulchre and left him. She went home with great pain and tremendous sorrow. For the first time, she was without him, and her loneliness was a new and a bitter source of pain. Her heart had been dying since her son's heart had stopped beating, but she was certain that her saviour would soon be resurrected. Most beloved mother, whose beauty surpasses that of all mothers, mother of mercy, mother of Jesus, and mother to us all, we are your children and we place all our trust in you. Teach us to see God in all things and all situations, even our sufferings. Help us to understand the importance of suffering and also to know 
the purpose of our suffering as God has intended it. You yourself were conceived and born without sin, were preserved from sin, yet you suffered more than anybody else. You accepted suffering and pain with love and with unsurpassed courage. You stood by your son from the time he was arrested until he died. You suffered along with him, felt his every pain and torment. You accomplished the will of God the Father, and according to his will, you have become our mother. We beg you, dear mother, to teach us to do as Jesus did. Teach us to accept our cross courageously. We trust you, most merciful mother. So teach us to sacrifice for all the sinners of the world. Help us to follow in your son's footsteps and even to be willing to lay down our lives for others. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us, for us now and in the hour of our death. death. Amen. Most merciful Mother, remind us always about the sorrows of your Son, Jesus. Concluding prayer, Queen of Martyrs, your heart suffered so much. I beg you, by the merits of the tears you shed in these terrible and sorrowful times, to obtain for me and for all the sinners of the world the grace of complete sincerity and repentance. Amen. Mary, who was conceived without sin and who suffered for us all, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.